I'm just stating the facts, my city been on the map With no best for when them guns are clapped and your bones are snapped Or your brains exposed when your skulls get cracked Or your conscience collapse from a whiff of that crack Now add to that, Tahitian treats and Tampicos is causing strokes and heart attacks Something's gotta give in order to get back and that's real So this year, the new idea on the bill was a soda tax They figure that by raising the prices to ignite the awareness Will decrease the amputation of our population The weight of our nation and vision impairment Invest the money back into the youth who's blinded to the truth because these so-called leaders been scaring us and not preparing us. So for the people I speak. Basically my inspiration for this uh, youth forum has its roots in a dream I've had off and on for many, many years, which is to work with youth and teaching youth facilitation skills, conflict resolution skills, leadership development, and community building. And I thought that the time has come. <laughs> So I put out a few feelers and I uh, started meeting people. I met our Darius McDonald over at Berkeley High School, who is the student dean. I met Angela Cox here at the teen library. She's been incredibly helpful and supportive about this uh, forum happening. Bill Say and I kind of ran into each other coincidentally. I just happened to see the event that he was hosting that was going to be here at the library. And as the teen librarian, I, I felt like I needed to really know about this and decided I'd contact him and reach out to him and bring my knowledge of what I know of this community and the young people that I've interacted with, with his experience as a facilitator. So it started with an idea and then it just grew. I made contact with the uh, police chief, uh, Chief Magnus. He was out of town, so he sent the uh, school uh, resource officer, uh, Sergeant Russell. The mayor, Mayor McLaughlin here in Richmond, she uh, agreed to come and speak. Many times when you see our elected officials interacting with the public, it's with the adult public and not the youth. Mayor Gail McLaughlin came and participated in today's Open Youth Forum. She wasn't here just for the introduction, just for a few words of public comment. Uh, she was here for the duration. When I think of the question, because I know the question posed here was, whose city is this? And that is a wonderful question. I mean, clearly, the city of Richmond belongs to its people. And it especially needs to be understood that the youth voice and the, the youth ownership of our city is extremely important. We have issues. To me, living in this city is um, is really like a challenge because people around us, wealthy cities, underestimate us because they think that this city is full of violence and because most of us come from low-income families. Um, but it's really a challenge for us as students to prove them wrong and prove them that not because we, our schools don't have enough money that we can, could not be successful in life, but we really can, only if we put effort into it. Some of the issues that I find very important to me in my communities are, um, you know, just the type of education that students are receiving. I truthfully believe that education is like the answer to all the problems that society has. Because if, you know, if our children, if the people of the community just not just in, in small local communities, but um, globally. And the children and the people that are growing up in our world are not educated in a way that will help them, you know, survive. Um, you know, we're always gonna have issues. So I think that um, providing quality education is the most important thing that our community can help. Um, one way, can be as easy as providing, you know, providing good books and enough books for children in, in early stages. Um, I, one thing that I'm currently researching is the importance of having a multicultural curriculum included into the into the kindergarten classrooms. Um, I think um, from studying so far about child child development, I think that it's really important for children to um, have access to curriculum that they can identify with. Um, and it's amazing to me that children are still reading books that are still racist um, and are not providing, you know, like single household um, parents as an example in literature or just not enough um, African American authors or, you know, small things that probably we don't think about, but it's really important to the students. 
But where our society is today, it's very difficult with how funding is coming because we're losing a lot of programs that are necessary to help run our educational programs. Uh, we're losing personnel because of the cuts. So we're running a school with a bare minimum a number of adults. So it makes it very hard for us to function and run a school appropriately the way I feel that we should run it. And then also our technological uh, challenges with Facebook and Twitter and um, learning how to use cell phones and being able to communicate with students on their level. Um, teachers are not trained about electronics and phones and iPods and iPads and so it makes it difficult because there's a, a divide between students and adults. But I make a point um, to understand where students are coming from, understand their communities, understand what's going on in their lives so that I can properly support them at the school site. One th recurring thing I've heard a lot this afternoon is about education. And adults in the city are trying to struggle to improve their educational circumstances and so are the young people. Just in the last four days, I've had two parents contact me and say that their junior, or they don't call it junior high anymore, their middle school students need help with math instruction. So that's a challenge that I hope to meet that all of you know the parents who have contacted me have to provide some sort of instruction. And a lot of times that's kind of a challenge to do because the, the level of math and the way it's taught is very different from when I went to school. And so a lot of times you have well-meaning people, but you need qualified people who can do it according to the standards <coughs> that the school district has it. So that's one of the things that I hope to bring to you in the future. But one thing I do have presently is a Facebook page for teens. Now that's a good thing and a not so good thing. Because if you don't have internet at home, you're not going to be able to get it unless you come here to the library. Um, and a lot of times in the school districts, because there are concerns with Facebook, <laughs> it is blocked in the school district. So sometimes that's a challenge. But if teachers selectively do allow their students to use the teen Facebook page, they will find that it also does help them with instruction. So I do have that. Uh, I also have an SAT workshop, and a lot of the schools do have SAT programs. But then again, I found that a lot of students have extracurricular activities that they do, and also sometimes jobs that they do after school. So we provide once a year a 10-week program that has a pre-test and a post-test with certified instructors to instruct you for a cost of $40. So $40, that's not bad, because if you did that on your own as an individual, it would be around $500. You know, it's a lot of people in Richmond that never leave the block, and they may be 35, 40 years old, and they, they, they don't know their way around Oakland or San Francisco or Concord, and you know, it's kind of a shame that we, we incarcerate ourselves, not even physically, but just mentally and emotionally, not to even be, you know, free enough to step outside your comfort zone and your boundaries, these type of things that we put on ourselves. So, I, you know, that's one thing I tell the youth a, a lot is that, you know, you're free. And, and one thing, another thing as far as us as adults and leaders in the community that I, I feel strongly about is the fear we sometimes um, have for the youth. You know, we, we don't, we, we almost, we almost um, react to the youth as if, as if we're scared of them. I'm here today more or less just to listen. Um, a little background on myself, I've been a police officer now for 19 years, all here in the city of Richmond. I'm currently working as a supervisor for the school resource officers that are assigned to all the high schools and the one middle school that you should have. <laughs> um, this position that I'm in is a volunteer position. It's not one that they assign you to. I asked for this position nine years ago when I was just an officer, and then when I got promoted, I asked for the position again. Uh, because again, the city of Richmond and the youth in the city of Richmond is very important to me. Uh, like Mr. McDonald stated earlier, we've done a lot of things growing up. Uh, in high school, him and I used to hang out a lot. And when he says, if we can make it, you can make it, we were hard heads <laughs> in high school. And, and I can say we, because <laughs> we hung out. We, we did a lot of stuff we shouldn't have done, and then we grew up. Uh, here in the city of Richmond, it's not an excuse that you can't make it. Uh, having a single home, not an excuse. I come from one. 
uh, low income, I come from one. So it's not an excuse that you can't make it. You just have to have the determination. My job as a officer in the school is to give back. We sit back and we talk to the students and try to educate you on things that you can do to make it. So again, I'm here today just to listen, try to get some advice on things that I can do to assist you. I think uh, the dialogue that really grabbed my heart the most were the spoken word artists from Raw Talent. Um, they speak of something that I think perhaps people know about and really don't know how to address. Let's welcome Raw Talent. I'm asking, how did I become another victim? It's because I'm black and in this white racist system. That's why I'm in hell, also known as prison. It's a shame, don't have a name, just a number. Daily it's the same fall, winter, spring, and summer. And why these guards always want to give me crap? And if it ain't that, the inmates plotting to attack. They just like TLC, because they want to creep. And try to get me when I try to go to sleep. What they don't know is that I don't go to sleep. Because at night, I think about why the hell was I sentenced. I'm here because I'm black, even though I'm innocent. I put it together and it makes perfect sense. Of people like me, of people like me, they're making dollars and cents. Jail is one of the biggest businesses, and you can read the 13th Amendment. We can be treated like slaves if we commit a crime. That's why it's mostly black males doing time. To so seeing it's probably not as human beings. These ghettos nightmares, so it's hard to have dreams. For a lot of black and browns in this country. Some of us come school and they say they see the reasons why the schools and classes are bleeding. If you take a look at our situation, look at what we're going through and what we are facing. Not saying it's right or wrong, but I understand. Because I ain't do nothing, but they still put me in this pen. To get a black male in jail is part of a plan. Was Africa was enslaved and it's no different. They were just like me because they were innocent. When I was arrested, I was red no rights. They just said, boy, you're doing 25 to life from birthday suits, meaning being in the nude. The clothes that's blue are wearing orange jumpsuits. We shipped to the plantation that would bust. The country was built by us, but not for us. Take a listen to that. Now how do it sound? Minorities living the guns and built this from the ground. But we're in this position, cause they want it this way. We robbing, killing, and dealing, cause they want it this way. We pimps and prostitutes, cause they want it this way. My mind they tried to take, but boy was that a mistake. Cause all they did was make me be more strong. Thought they enslaved my mind and body, but they were wrong. My mind went free like Fred Douglas, so now it was gone. My body can't be chained, but they can't enslave my brain. And I know I got a mad cause my whole mindset. But you know what? This young brother's not done yet. Just like Fred Douglas, even though I'm free, I won't be done till help others get just like me. And I'm sure because I want to reach and teach people, they want you to see a thug. But don't believe in what they saying cause they just like rugs. Cause what they doing is lying. And it's no coincidence a lot was fighting and dying. But I refuse to use physical abuse. My mind is like a gun and I load it by reading. When my mouth get to shooting a lot, will be hurt, but they won't be bleeding. And I won't be surprised if I'm killed in this prison because I'm a menace to a white racist system, but I'll no longer just be another victim, a victim. Tupac's a cool. You can say that the realest to ever do with your music is what I ride to. Huh? Because now it's hard to listen to rappers I feel lied to. You stood for black power, had pride in the black panthers in this white man's world with thug life instead of cancer. Well, let them tell it that you's a threat to society, but gangsta music selling in these white folks who bind it and white folks who profit off that black race music throwing dirt on your name like they ain't recognize your movement. So I'm gonna do this for you, cause ain't nobody else doing it. Speak for the half knocks and those who lost hope, clothes raggedy, run down, and they can't afford soap people dying every day. Uh, for me, it all started when I was about 10 or 11. Uh, first, it was just something I was just practicing, just doing just because, but once I got to like my 16, 17 years old, I was experiencing a new life as far as like what was going on in the streets and you know, poverty started hitting and mom's not working and all of that. So I started using it for a sense of healing or somebody to talk to because I was a quiet kid and I didn't really know how to really express myself. So I wrote it down. So that transformed into me wanting to be a rap artist. Well, then I met Molly Rayner and other people who influenced me as far as the poetry and spoken words. So I started writing about that. And the more events I went to as far as poetry and spoken word events, the messages that I was hearing these people talk about, I was like, okay, how could I take the politics and still keep my the grassroots message? But they rapping about coke. Man, life ain't a party. Why we take it as a joke? I'm more concerned with black flesh hanging from a rope. I'ma speak for my people that's been lost in the system. I send a kite to the prisoners cause don't nobody miss them. And my beautiful sisters, I send kisses, keep your head up. Brenda's having babies, motherhood they ain't prepared for. All these Uncle Times like to you, it got me fed up. Why we run from the other man when we the ones he's scared of? I speak education. 
And I just speak, I teach too. I'm learning all the teachers on better ways to reach the youth. And I get down with this poetry. Well, that's obvious, you can see with this rap, I'm the truth and it's you who inspires me. Cause I represent the rage, from my thoughts to the page, corner stores to the cage. OGs and young age, a beast was made in me. 25, I pray to see, this a lifelong bondage, prolonging of slavery. And you talked about freedom, my elevation, read books, taught yourself, tried to lead a whole nation. You was barely 23, that's a year over me. I guess my time running short, but we'll soon find out. I'm all about community. I like to feed the poor. Rotten teeth to smell the death out they breath on they paws. I stop to give them hugs. They hurt and I show them love. Cause that's my brother from another. The struggle will make thugs. And all of these old timers is the ones that's at blame. Y'all who dropped the ball and picked up that cocaine. No more preaching pro-black. You was hooked on crack. So we lived how you lived and then put it in our raps. Now everybody down and pop, cause very few understood. He was speaking reality that goes on in the hood. And I do the same thing. And I'm all about change. I'm trying to free the minds of slaves by unlocking these chains. And I'm just a young man on a journey to find truth. So I do this for you. I put my life on the line. He sparked that brain to change the world. And that's all in due time. Thank you. One very important contributor to this forum. His name's Doug Harris, and this is what he brought out early in the forum. It's really crucial. He brought out the issue of how do we reach young people? How do we reach them? Is the youth that is hard to reach for one reason or another. So if that's you in some way, that you feel for whatever reason that things maybe like this even, does it appeal to you? Is it really for you? Can anyone speak personally to it from you that somehow, yes, in some way you are a little bit that one who's a little bit hard to reach? My experience was when I was going to the Wani Dijon Middle School back when it first opened, um, I, uh, and this is kind of going on to how to reach uh, out to youth, uh, there was a, a man one day in one of the, in my pre-algebra class, and I didn't know who he was. Uh, I introduced myself, he introduced, uh, we had a little conversation and he told me about this after school program that I uh, was gonna be starting up and uh, he said, you know, would you like to drop by? Um, I, I really didn't, but I dropped by anyway. Um, and it was interesting though, because he didn't address me as, like, as a student, he addressed me as an individual. And I think that's something that's lost uh, nowadays. People tend to just, you know, he's a student, you know, kind of stereotype what the student is, but each student is an individual that has their own experience, their own life that they're going through. The teachers travel into Richmond and they don't know nothing about Richmond. And so it's difficult when they don't know what the community background is, who the kids really are, what's going on. So that's a key component that, that we have been working on for the past three years since I've been at the, the principal at Dijon. And I believe that if you don't have teachers that don't look like you, it wasn't until I went away to Howard University that I see teachers that look like me. And, and to come back and bring that back to students is a very key component for me and my role as an educator and to make sure that I build those relationships, that I watch the movies that they watch, I listen to the music that they listen to, I know what's going on in the community and have a, a tap on what's happening because if I don't, then I'm, I'm not relating to them or know what's going on with them. I felt like things wasn't presented to me right. Like, I didn't know about community centers in Richmond. Like, I just found out about the Nevin Center, the other, like last, the beginning of the year. I was like, what is that? And it's like, you gotta push these things, I feel like. And you gotta try to talk to other youth who is doing things. It's like, certain people do talk to us. I mean, we putting ourselves out there, you know, raw talent. We youth, basically. I mean, I'm 19. He 22, he 22, that's youth in my opinion. We ain't live no life really. And not a lot of youth are aware, how do you find this? You know, you don't want to go, okay, let me go get housing help from here. Let me go to East Bay Works. Let me go to Rubicon. Let me go to uh, Rye Center. That is, you know, a youth area. But um, because they stop at 21, I'm limited on what I could receive. Even though I actively want to be engaged, what do we consider youth? Is it by the number, the age of it? Uh, again, I want to say we're here to explore issues that face youth enrichment. And we started to go with the issue of how do you reach youth? Maybe some youth are hard to reach. And then there starts to be an issue of maybe it's not safe. 
So fear of violence in the background, or maybe not so much, so much in the background, maybe it's in the foreground, and then the issue of territories. Are you from which part of the city, and is it safe to go and other parts of the city? Should we stay there? In order for young people to really get involved in these programs that's based all throughout the city, it's not going to take just the police or the mayor or these programs to bring everybody together. It's going to take people who started to beef way back then to come together and talk to each other and bring these young people together because a lot of stuff that's going on is passed down from generation to generation. And the people who started it, if they're not involved in these programs, it's not going to work because kids from North Richmond is not going to come or Central, and if they do come, it's going to be a fight or it's going to be a shootout. So I feel like you have to, re in order to reach the youth, it has to be people that come from that community that know what's going on and can do something about solving that problem first before anything will work. Everything that you said is correct. A few problems is uh, it ain't really about why the beef started anymore. It's just about the loss of life and getting folks to understand that everybody didn't lost. Ain't nobody your head, ain't nobody winning, anybody counts on you, don't matter. Everybody continue to lose. So the youngsters ain't fighting over what the OGs is fighting over. They was fighting over a call, the disrespect issue. These youngsters fighting over my, my big brother got killed. You know, I seen my cousin die. Got my other cousin in jail for murder. I'm losing my family. You know, so it's about trying to deal with their pain. It's just not as simple as if you know what you're funking for, why you're funking. These youngsters got an a, a ingrained hatred towards each other. And they don't even know one another. They just know they're from a different side. Maybe part of the reason for violence happens out of uh, different parts of the city and how you know you can have a beef that comes out of these uh, different areas and it can turn violent and maybe that's part of the background issues of why it's hard to reach youth and why it's why sometimes people will have a hard time getting out of the house because at some level there's a safety issue and nobody likes doing what they're doing I mean, just bottom line, nobody likes living the way they live in. Nobody wants to be walking around fearful, having to carry a pistol. Uh, I go way to San Jose to a Rick Ross concert, and I'm still bumping into folks who want to shoot me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I go to the Club 101, and I'm still bumping into folks. I mean, it's just, nobody likes to live that way. But they don't see any more options. Just like you said, they don't see anything. They see no hope. They see no future. So they do what they do, because that's all they know. And it's detrimental to them, their family, their community to folks who's trying to do right. Can, is there a way I can work through you guys and work with people like Mr. McDonald and other individuals from Richmond who went through this to sit down with individuals from North and South Side and Central, obviously separately beginning, and then get together so we can try to stop this senseless problems that's going on? First, we look at presentation. So mm -hmm. if a young person see me, they gonna see, oh, he got on the hoodie, beanie, dreadlocks, I feel where you're coming from. They see you, they see a uniform, mm -hmm. a system that's been known to brutalize the people so that automatically they're not going to talk to you. So far as your example, if you have to take, you got to come to us outside of the uniform. I won't come like this because I need everybody to understand where I'm from and where he's from and what we're trying to accomplish. I'm not there to arrest nobody, I'm not running a warrant, but I do want to stop walking out to crime scenes and seeing our youth laid out. I want to shoot you my number. Mm -hmm. um, all you guys, mm -hmm. so we can sit down one-on-one -on -one and try to arrange that. Because uh, I totally agree, we need to get this done. Now, you can't fix it, but if you, if all you can do is facilitate, like, wherever y'all, if y'all can come up with a, a neutral ground to meet, i make sure don't nothing happen, so everybody can come in here and talk. If all you do is be the bodyguard and make sure nobody slide through, that's what you can do. As far as a teacher, get down there and, and talk to these young people as far as, like, what's going on, which, why you feel like you can't go up over there? Just ask to me, just asking simple questions like, why are you funking with the other side? Nine times out of ten, the that kids is not going to have an answer. Like, dang, then you ask him, well, is you willing to resolve it? If he say yeah, then the kid going to be like, well, if the big homies want to solve it, then what can we do? So you got to bring everybody together at the same time and then facilitate some type of uh, negotiation, some type of talking. But at the same time, it can't be 
no, oh, y'all stop the violence, but it ain't no opportunities out there. It ain't no jobs. It ain't no programming. It ain't nothing going on because then that's going to be, well, why should I stop hustling if it ain't no jobs for me, if it ain't no program? Why should I stop shooting if, if I ain't got nothing to do? So if we do our part, y'all as a government have to make sure that y'all do y'all part. We need teachers that care about us. If I go to school and my teacher don't care, then what's the point of me going to school? If I ain't got no job, why am I going to stop hustling? If I'm uh, getting shot at, why would I go to the police if they shoot me too? I might as well pack a piece. So it got to be all of those areas have to be addressed first and foremost and in the same time as us coming together. Other than that, the problem ain't going to work and the young people going to keep up. I totally understand that. These young people are our future. If we don't let them know that we love them and stop being scared. I don't know when that happened. I don't know when grown folks start being scared kids. My mom still hit me today and she <laughs> had So I would never, ever understand that. But we got to show these young people we're not afraid of you. You don't scare me. You're hurting. That's the way you're acting like that. I was really glad that Sergeant Russell, as a native, uh, a resident who grew up in Richmond, uh, was able to ask and direct that question, even though he understands part of the problems in terms of the violence and the discourse between residents and people and the turf wars. I believe that Dante was really able to underscore the fundamental problem and really articulate what the issue is and how to address it. Once you ask the questions like, how do we reach these young people? How do we get out to these communities in this barrier between different neighborhoods? That's when I feel like the spice was needed as far as we want to do work with young people. You need to have more young people at these type of forums. So I feel like towards the end, it got, it got juicy. It's, it's bridging those gaps that allows the communication to flow freely. And that also, that also creates a community where we're not scared of each other. What happened today was connection, and that was also the main problem that people were talking about. They were talking about the lack of connection actually being one reason why violence happens, where uh, young people in the south part of the city or the north part don't connect with each other. There's some issue that comes up, and then there's violence. And so one of the things that simply happened in the room, it happened, was people connected. And that's what people were saying, that there was so much connection that was happening. People that would have never met each other, that looked different from each other, were connecting. For me, it was good to be here to listen to not only the youth, but my elders as well, to find solutions for Richmond. You know, and in my eye, um, when you find solutions for one place, you can duplicate that and find solutions for many. Listening to the older teenagers in the um, uh, early 20s, gentlemen speak about you know, the solutions, you know, that means a lot because they're in it. And when, you, when you're in it, you know it, you know. And so um, with any problem, there's always a solution to every problem. It's just because there's a lot of funk that's going on in Richmond, it's also our drama is being carried to other cities because we do have family members elsewhere. We do go to other cities and they know what's going on in Richmond and in connections because we're reaching out in the streets to other streets. So we need to have forums like this and team up with other people on what methods. We need to all talk as a people.